Let's talk about the difference between apparent weight and true weight. Let me introduce you to a, an astronaut, Story Musgrave, and his mass is 80 kilograms. Here's another picture of Story Musgrave. He's floating next to the space shuttle as it orbits the Earth. What's his mass in this picture? Mass is a characteristic of the object. Story's mass is always going to be 80 kilograms, whether he's on the Earth or next to the space shuttle orbiting the Earth, or whether he's on the moon. What about his weight? As he floats there, what is his weight? If you read the papers, you'll read that he is weightless, weightless in outer space. But don't believe everything you read in the papers. I'm here to tell you that his weight in this picture is a whopping 648 newtons. Now that sounds like a lot. But remember, each newton is only about one-fifth of a pound, so he's not overweight. But how can it be 648 newtons if he's just floating there? Why is he not weightless? Well, here's a picture of the Earth as seen from the moon, taken by Apollo 17. Which of these circles would best represent the orbit of that space shuttle? If you said the white one, you'd be correct. The space shuttle doesn't go that far from home, only about 400 miles above the surface of the Earth. Remember, the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on an object, on story, depends on his mass and on how far he is from the center of the Earth. When story is standing in his bathroom, on a bathroom scale, he's about 4,000 miles from the center of the Earth. At that distance, the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons for each kilogram. And that's going to give a gravitational force with the 80 kilograms mass of story of 784 newtons. Now, when story is floating, floating next to the space shuttle, he's only 400 miles above the surface. That's 10% further. The gravitational field strength is going to be smaller than 9.8, but not by a lot. It's 8.1 newtons for each kilogram. That gives a gravitational attraction, a, a weight force, of 648 newtons. But how can that be? He appears to be weightless. He appears to be weightless. Let's analyze this by looking at the situation where I am standing on a scale. Let's draw a free body diagram for me. The Earth pulls down on me with a gravitational force and the scale pushes up. Let's also draw a free body diagram for the scale. The Earth pulls down with a weight force, much smaller than the weight force on me. I push down on the scale and the floor pushes up on the scale. The question is, which of these five forces is actually being measured by the scale. And I'll give you a hint. The scale cannot measure a force that does not act on the scale. So it has to be one of these three forces that act on the free body diagram of the scale. If you said it's the downward push, the normal force, by Greg on the scale, you'd be correct. That's what the scale is measuring. Now, by Newton's third law, the upward force by the scale on me has to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And we call that force the apparent weight. The gravitational force we call the true weight because that force cannot change except through diet and exercise. The Earth doesn't care what you're doing today. It pulls the same on you unless you diet and exercise. Now, to summarize, the apparent weight is measured as the reading of the scale. It's equal to the magnitude of the normal force, the scale pushing up on your feet, or whatever is below you pushing up on your feet. If you are standing in your bathroom with zero acceleration, it is equal in magnitude to the true weight, the gravitational force but it is not the same force. Let's look at the situation where Greg is standing on that scale, but now in an elevator. If that elevator has zero acceleration, well, 
that doesn't mean the elevator stopped. That elevator could be moving upward at 200 miles an hour very quickly, as long as it's a constant 200 miles an hour. In that case, I would not know that I was moving if there were no windows in that elevator. The free body diagram for me would have a weight force. In this case, that weight force would be about a thousand newtons, which sounds like a lot because it is. That diagram has to scream balance, scream zero acceleration, so the normal force exerted by the scale on my feet and the reading on the scale would be a thousand newtons. My apparent weight in this situation would be equal in magnitude to my true weight. But if that elevator were accelerating upward, if I had walked into the elevator on the ground floor and hit the button for the tenth floor and suddenly the elevator took off, sped up in the upward direction, well the floor would push up into me, the gravitational force would still be a thousand newtons. Again the earth doesn't care what I'm doing. But my diagram has to scream that acceleration, so my apparent weight is going to be greater than a thousand newtons. It's going to be greater than my true weight, and I'm going to feel heavy. I'm going to feel like I just ate 15 Big Macs. If the elevator, on the other hand, has an acceleration downward, and again, this could happen as I'm arriving at the tenth floor, and as the elevator slows, the floor of the elevator slows, but I keep going, and so uh, the pressure on the balls of my feet uh, becomes less. In that case, my gravitational force, my true weight, is still a thousand newtons, but my free body diagram has to scream that acceleration downward, so my apparent weight would be less than a thousand newtons, and I would feel light on my feet. I would feel like I could dance all night. What if that elevator had the special value of acceleration, 9.8 meters per second every second, down? Well, this is the same acceleration that a dropped apple has. How would you achieve that acceleration in an elevator? Well, simple. Just cut the cables. Let it fall. In that case, my true weight is still 1,000 newtons. However, my normal force, the normal force acting on my feet, how big does that have to be? Well, we know that anything in free fall has a very simple free body diagram. Free fall means that the only force acting on you is the gravitational force. And in that case, the normal force between the scale and my feet goes to zero. I'm falling and the elevator is falling and we're falling together. And so, am I weightless? No. I still weigh a thousand newtons. That weight force is causing me to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second every second. That weight force is about to cause me great pain when we reach the ground floor. I am apparently weightless as I fall with the elevator. Now what does this have to do with Story Musgrave next to the space shuttle? What does this have to do with a falling elevator? Is Story Musgrave falling? Yes. Yes, he is. It was Newton who first suggested that an orbiting object was merely falling around the Earth and continually missing the Earth. He used this diagram to argue that if you took a cannon to the top of a high mountain and fired the cannonball horizontally, the faster you fire that cannonball, the further from the base of the mountain it will land. Eventually, it travels so far that the curvature of the Earth becomes important, as in trajectory B. Eventually, Newton argued, you could get that cannonball going so fast that it would continue falling, as in uh, trajectory C, it would continue falling but never hit the Earth, that the surface of the Earth would fall out from under the cannonball at the same rate that the cannonball is falling. That's what's happening to Story Musgrave as he orbits the Earth with the space shuttle. Both he and the space shuttle are continually falling, just like me in the elevator.